Hello, movie plots here. Today, we'll discuss a Chinese science fiction adventure film called The Snow Monster, released in 2019. In this movie, we see that with the future rapid development of science and technology, a gene research company sent Shen Qing and others into a mysterious snowy area on the edge of the Arctic. Unexpectedly, they were attacked by unknown giant creatures. Spoilers ahead. And take care. The movie starts with a crew of genetic experts from Hong Industries being shown working in the frozen mountains of the Arctic after a snowstorm. They are planning to spend several days in the area to study the mysterious place after obtaining aberrant signs in the area. Their expedition commander, Shen Qing, rapidly discovers spikes on their radar, suggesting a disturbance in the gravitational field in the nearby area. This is instantly conveyed to the headquarters, where senior research professor Lin is based. Lin feels that this irregularity in the gravitational field will provide them with a fantastic opportunity to study genetic mutations. Then, we see the crew is going to explore the nearby area but the team's car breaks down, the atmosphere begins to warm as they detect something moving beneath the snow. The director at the headquarters is watching all this and instructs the team to get out of the area. Before they could get out of there, a giant arm appears from beneath the mountain and slams into the car, smashing all the windows. Massive horns emerge in front of their van as the team watches on in horror and the van crashes down the mountain. After the van, hitting rocks and mountain, they ultimately reach the bottom. The entire crew is seriously hurt. Ching looks on in fear as a massive snow monster emerges in front of her. The monster looks at her in a very mysterious way. Realizing, that the crew is in danger, Professor Lin and Kai travel to meet an archaeologist named Fei. However, because of his past disagreement with one of them, Fei shows little interest in their offer, Hong Industries, especially with his ex-girlfriend, who turns out to be Ching. However, when the professor tells him that Ching is in danger, she got an accident five days before and they have lost contact with her for the last two days, Fei gets serious and instantly chooses to help them by traveling there personally, as we can see, he clearly still has affections for Ching. The team leaves for the rescue mission towards the snowy mountains. On their way, Professor Lin explains every detail of their research and findings to Fei. They are accompanied by several mercenaries and they eventually arrive at a fascinating old ancient temple. Fei instantly observes the disturbance in the atmosphere, since all his instruments are malfunctioning due to disruptions from the local climate. The man pulls out the map and discovers that the patterns of the pillars fit exactly with his map, and Fei finds the switch to the entrance. When Fei and Kai press the stone mechanisms together, the ground begins to tremble, and countless stone columns emerge from below the ground while the other members of the team watch in surprise. Suddenly, the ground cracks up in the middle, forcing everyone to slide down as they crash into a vast cave. Luckily, no one gets wounded, while all their signals are cut off from the headquarters. And as people began to seek an escape route from the cave, they swiftly locate the skeletons of warriors from thousands of years ago. Upon watching closely, the skeletons appear to all have holes behind their skulls, and the people wonder why these holes are on the back of their skulls. As the crew travels deeper into the caverns, they notice a strange dead bird with a large curved beak. They conclude that the bird might have drilled holes in the dead soldiers' skulls. The mercenaries become even more terrified when one of their own falls to the ground, revealing a large hole in the man's head the same as they saw in the old skeletons earlier. The group begins hearing many chirping noises from the ceiling, as countless brain-eating birds spring out of the eggshells and dash at everyone. The mercenaries fire indiscriminately, but the enemy's numbers are too many, and the people are swiftly overpowered, as they are being picked down by the deadly birds one by one. One of the soldiers begins yelling amid the chaos while all the others are busy reloading their rifles and the animals begin to swarm around the soldier while hoisting him into the air. Fei understands that the adversaries must be particularly sensitive to the sound and instructs everyone to stay silent, the birds finally return to the roof. While attempting to remain as covert as possible, the party carefully travels across the field. Suddenly, Kai's phone started buzzing from his morning alarm, compelling everyone to escape instantly. The humans run towards the exit while the birds charge at them in huge numbers, but Fei manages to throw his grenade at the enemy, causing tremendous explosions in the cave. Fei escapes just in time as he falls into the snow fields below. 
The group is astounded by the incredible sights in front of them, which the professor thinks are caused by an abnormal gravitational field in the area. They continue searching for their missing team, headed by Ching. Fei discovers a piece of a headlight beneath the snow, indicating the crash site. The mercenary captain also finds a team's camera that is still functional, displaying footage of Ching and her team, suggesting they are still alive. Suddenly, one of the soldiers notices movements beneath the snow and a giant snow shark jumps over the group. The creature starts devouring the men, causing the mercenaries to shoot at it indiscriminately. However, their attacks are not effective as the creature is protected by the snow and its hard hide is almost impenetrable. The shark charges toward one of the mercenaries, grabbing him and pulling him away. The group tries to retreat, but the monster jumps out from underneath and knocks everyone into the air. As the creature prepares to devour the humans, it is grabbed by a massive white ape, a snow monster. The people watch in shock as the giant creature beats the shark on the mountains and creates earthquakes with every strike. The monster begins consuming the snow shark when a soldier accidentally fires his weapon, causing the monster to become hostile and roar furiously at the group. The mercenaries try to attack with their weapons, but their attacks only make the monster angrier. The giant strikes the mountain with his fists, creating a shockwave that knocks the people to the ground. They try to fire a rocket launcher at the monster, but it misses and causes an avalanche. The soldiers try to run, but Kai falls and Fei rushes back to help, causing them both to be buried under the snow. Fei wakes up to find they have been captured by native people resembling Amazon tribes. They perform a ritual involving making a knife cut on the captives' legs and draining their blood. Fei cuts his ropes and escapes, taking the village chief hostage. A warrior named Kaya, the most fearsome fighter in the tribe and daughter of the chief captures Fei after a fight. Fei is saved by Ching, who has also been rescued by the same tribals and explains that the ritual was meant to help newcomers heal faster. She informs Fei that all her team members have died. Fei and the mercenary captain pay respects to their fallen men and are about to leave when a roar is heard from a distance and the ground begins to tremble. The snow monster approaches quickly and the professor reveals his true objective, to capture the snow monster for genetic research. He wants the soldiers to help and offers a lot of money in return, which the captain agrees to. The captain notifies his general to send back up as the monster seems invulnerable to normal gunfire. Meanwhile, the indigenous people are planning a ceremony to welcome the snow monster to their village, as they worship him as their god. Kaya's mother, the high priestess, is known to have the ability to communicate with the monster. The grounds begin to shake as a massive snow monster appears from below the mountain, eventually towering over everyone. The snow monster roars to welcome the people, the monster reaches out toward Fei, and the man conjures up all his courage, eventually managing to make contact with the monster, while all the people smile at the peaceful union. However, the ceremony is quickly interrupted when the monster is hit by a large explosion from the back, while a second missile hits the mountain and knocks all the people onto the ground. It turns out that the mercenaries have found their location, and Professor Lin tells the soldiers to fire immediately at the creature. This angers the villagers and causes them to attack the mercenaries, but they are no match against the modern weapons of the soldiers and are killed one by one. Kaya sees this and charges in to attack the captain, and the two begin to exchange blows as they are equally matched. The monster becomes furious at the human's gunshots and prepares to wipe out everyone by using its massive hand, but stops at the last moment as it does not want to kill Fei and his friends. Lin takes the chance and fires his special cannon at the giant monster, releasing a powerful shockwave that injures the creature terribly as it screams in pain. The Yeti eventually falls down the mountain and disappears somewhere. Fei and all his friends are captured by the mercenaries at gunpoint. Lin rushes in to see that the creature has retreated and laughs in victory, while Ching demands to know why the man is doing such terrible things. The professor mocks the woman for her lack of imagination, as the creature can be a valuable asset for human progress. The man points the gun at the high priestess and demands she brings them to the monster, but the woman refuses immediately, causing Lin to kill her husband right in front of her. The priestess mourns for her husband's death, but Lin takes her away immediately, alongside her daughter, planning to force them to reveal the location of the creature. The soldiers take the high priestess and her daughter towards the wilderness while forcing them to locate the monster, but strange things begin to happen as one of the men disappears into the snow. 
the soldiers notice this and become alerted by the incoming hostiles, such as a giant shark that jumps out from the ground, showing its massive jaws, and crashes down towards the people. The professor takes out the electrical cannon and fires it, creating a shockwave that knocks away all the creatures and kills them. The professor then accuses the priestess of purposely leading them into a trap and threatens to kill her daughter. Kaya tackles the professor, and the captain shoots at her, but the priestess sacrifices herself to protect her daughter. Kaya cries as the snow monster roars in the distance, sensing the death of its friend. Then we see the monster appears to take revenge for the death of its friend. The mercenaries surround the snow monster and attack it, but their weapons are useless. The snow monster attacks the humans, nearly killing the professor who barely escapes. Kaya charges toward the captain to avenge her mother's death, while the snow monster grabs a soldier. Reinforcements arrive in the form of fighter jets, but the monster counters by punching one of the airplanes into pieces. The professor shoots his cannon at the monster, stunning it, but is stopped by Ching who tries to convince him to stop. Fei escapes and rushes toward the rocket launcher to grab it, while Kai helps Kaya fight the captain. The captain strikes Kaya, but Kai saves her by grabbing his legs and Kaya chocks the captain to death with her legs. Fei destroys the fighter jets with the rocket launcher. Debris from the explosion lands on the professor's leg, injuring him. The snow monster breaks free and smashes another plane before turning smashing the professor like a bug. The snow monster feels very sad for the dead humans and wounded humans. He just walks slowly and disappears into the distance. Ching hugs Fei for saving her life. When the three survivors try to say goodbye to the natives, they see the images of people who once welcomed them with open hearts, smiling at them. They soon realize that these are just memories and that their friends are all dead. They turn back in sorrow as there is no happiness, only pain for their loved ones who died. This is how the story ends. What do you think about this story? If you like the story, tell us in the comments below, and, leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Take care of yourself and this channel, until we meet again.